Hello, I'm Nick Ray, and I'm in the Engineering Division with the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources. Today, I'm going to walk you through the steps in building a life jacket loaner station. Below, you'll find a link to the plans, a list of material, as well as equipment needed to complete this task. But first, a little bit of information about these stations. The Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources is partnering with community groups and public agencies to place these stations for boaters to use on public waterways. All you do is borrow a life jacket before hitting the water and hang it back up at the end of your day. You can find more information on our website at fw.ky.gov and search life jacket loaner stations. We'd like to thank the CETO Foundation for supplying some of the life jackets at these stations. While most of us know that old adage that there is more than one way to skin a cat, this particular structure design and method of construction is both deliberately simple and robust. So if you have much or little construction skills, and if you follow these steps, then you'll produce a long lasting PFD loaner station and contribute to the uniformity of all the stations throughout the state. So let's get started. Step one is to build the sign frame itself. It really has two major components. You have a picture framed portion and then a portion that encompasses all that that helps you to secure to the posts. The picture frame portion is mitered in each corner. It's important to note that you'll have the dimensions needed in the drawings in the referenced attached document. The miter picture frame portion is really only screwed on the end with two screws in each corner slightly staggered. It's only just binding it together. The next portion is which will hold all of this as one singular unit. It's important that on these corners that you take the time to pre-drill with something like an eighth inch bit, slightly smaller than the screws you bought for this build. The second part of step one is putting the outside frame onto the picture framed portion. I've cut a couple of one inch blocks to allow it to act as standoffs to create a reveal that center this picture frame portion on the outside. So it looks like this. I'll just raise up our frame here, set our blocks, pull over this outside portion that I've already pre-cut, and it gives me a one inch on this end and a one inch on the bottom side. So now it's centered. Something else I think is important to note is I'll attach a screw every eight or ten inches all the way around this frame, really binding it together. If you notice that the screws don't actually tighten it up and you've got a gap, pull it out and then run it right back in and you'll, saw, you'll see it draw it up. Install the sign provided into your frame. It's important to make sure that your sign is facing up for this portion. It'll fit right in there. If it's not and it's facing the other direction, a lot of our wording will be covered up. Once you've laid in your sign, go ahead and get it. Ensure that you have an even reveal all the way around. Most will be able to achieve around a three quarter to a half of an inch reveal. At that point, you can take a bit sized just under the screws that you choose for this and go ahead and pre-drill two in each corner, ensuring not to actually drill through or right in that miter. Stay off and away from it slightly. And then just one or two along the long edges and then one on each short edge of the sign. If you decide to deviate in any way from the list of materials in the screw options, make sure that they're all exterior grade screws. And in this case, it's no longer than an inch and a half. If so, it'll poke through the other side and become a hazard from there. So have a short enough screw. Plus for this application, make sure it's, it's of the pan head type so that it doesn't dimple the metal. Step two, build the roof frame. I've already assembled it here, but this is the bottom of the roof frame structure. 
on your ends at your attachment points, it's important to pre-drill here so that in time, when this treated lumber begins to lose its heavy buildup of moisture and dry out, it doesn't split later. So take that extra second and perform that step. Once you've completed your roof frame, we can now pre-cut and sort of assemble our roof structure in preparation for installation in the field. The next step is to cut a couple of temporary ridge posts. They'll be at 11 and a half inches and they'll go flush on the end of this member, stood up just temporarily screwed in place. Next, go ahead and cut your ridge post. This is a permanent feature unlike these, but it'll help us get our cut on our rafters. So I've got it pre-cut here. I'm gonna set it up on that end and this end, center it on our ridge post, making sure that it's center on the structure itself and leave just enough overhang, which works out to be at an inch and a half to match this member. Once you've, get it, once you've got it placed, Go ahead and pre-drill and toenail screw through the top of this just to hold it in place. Continuing on through the roof structure, we're going to work on cutting the rafters. Whether or not you're building this in place, or you're like me, you're building it in a shop to later assemble, it's a good thing to maybe consider cutting all your rafters and testing them before moving forward. The way that I'm gonna do that is the real simple way. Follow along. I'm gonna measure an inch and a half on a scrap piece of lumber, cut just over the size that I need, and then I'm gonna scribe that inch and a half all the way down that piece of lumber. It's just a reference mark. You don't even have to go end to end, just for convenience sake here in a second. Now, I'm gonna take that rafter, I'm gonna, or soon to be rafter, I'm gonna lay it up against the end of my structure, just as you see. I'm flushing the top of the ridge post, and then I'm using that referenced line for the bottom side, that's an inch and a half off the bottom. From there, holding this piece of material up, I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna scribe what we call the bird's mouth, this vertical cut and this horizontal cut, as well as this plum cut on the ridge post. That'll be our first test. I'll cut this and we'll see how it fits. So we've cut our first rafter. I've tested it, laid it in place, and it's a good fit. So from here, like a lot of contractors like to do, we'll name this guy Pat, short for pattern, and that'll serve as our scribe tool for the rest of our rafters and we'll just get them done. I have permanently installed these rafters. My intent is to put those up after we've installed the structure and lifted it plumb in the field to then off of a ladder put these on. But for the purpose of describing the next part, we'll show it. Next, you'll use these one by twos cut to length, overall seven foot, I believe. Rely on your drawings for that. And we'll pre-drill them along each rafter and they're gonna be installed from the nose or the eave side of the roof, three high up to the top ridge. I call these just mini purlins is really all they are. They're meant to be put in place to support the actual roof covering, which we'll see in a minute. It's important that with this small lumber that you pre-drill those as well with these hefty duty screws. Onto our roof covering. In using what was specified or called out in the list of materials that you have, this particular Ondura product comes in a length that allows for two even cuts that'll produce three evenly spaced pieces. So it's real simple. Lay it on the roof oriented just the way that you see, 
just barely hold flush with the bottom and that'll just cover the purlin at the top. The gap that you'll soon find out that exists will be covered by the ridge cap. This is meant to really just keep water off our sign and make it last a little bit longer and be a little more durable. The fasteners that come with it work really well. Screw them through the top ridge, not through the valley itself, and then don't cinch it down, but let it maintain its height and just slightly provide a little bit of tension on that top ridge. Another notable regarding the roof material is make sure you leave yourself a quarter inch, maybe even three eighths of an inch overhang on the side and even at the bottom. When that rain is shed off of it, we want it to bypass, get past that framing or the lumber itself. All right, next and the final step as it relates to the roof assembly is the ridge cap. This is the material you see here. It's a little off color in the green, but that's okay. We're laying it right up on the roof and you can see what it does. It produces a relatively free, puncture free, and um, seam free assembly, namely because it covers up the majority of these screws and you need really very few just to tack this thing down. Trying to make sure that it's centered either way, just use your hand and push it down so it contours to this particular slope of roof. Pull out just enough, just past your framing, and then you're going through the same structure, through one of the ridges, and then down into these mini purlins that I referred to earlier. This is really the only portion of the build now that we give an option whether you go for a 2x4 or a 2x6 or even a 2x8. Uh, this is the part of the build that supports the ladder hooks or what will be our PFD hooks. And it's just two 2x4s or 2x8s of your choosing sandwiched together and screwed. It'll then be pre-drilled at an angle and attached to the post once it's stood up in the field. So they're cut to length and I'll screw them together. I will slightly, I will stagger, again, eight to 12 inches separation between these screws, and I'll kind of face them towards each other a little bit rather than just driving them straight through. That just helps kind of pull it together a little tighter. Then I'll flip it over and do the same thing. Finally, as it relates to this portion of the build, that is the PFD hanger portion, we'll find a bit sized just under your bot ladder hook or PFD hook, as will soon be for us. We'll pre-drill a hole only slightly, maybe an inch and a half or two inches, and that way it makes it a little easier for us to get this started and to thread in. In my case, this is a 3 8 inch bit. I've already pre-drilled. And now I can just hand start and thread this all the way down in. And again, you've got the layout for these hooks in your drawings. They're evenly spaced. All right, we're here in the field. We've went from the shop, went to the place where we're gonna set up our station. We've chose to move all the things we've assembled out into the field, and now we're gonna put it together. We're on step four, assemble your station. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is cut your post to length at 125 inches is where we'll be. That includes 25 inches of burial into the ground, meaning that's the height, that's the depth of your footer, 25 inches. From there, we're gonna apply just an inch of gravel to allow any moisture that gets in over time to not settle on the base of that post and rot it out. From here, you're gonna measure down on each post 11 and a half inches. That's the top of your sign assembly. 
I have cut one inch blocks as cheaters, if you will, slid in on either side, set it down, and now it gives me that even reveal on either side. I'm gonna put four screws through this frame portion on both sides, flip it over and do the same thing, and then we'll be ready to stand this whole assembly up in place. All right, so we've stood it up. Now we're using this extra bit of two by four material to brace. Kevin and I are gonna get it plumb and secure in preparation for pouring concrete around the outside of our posts. So we've leveled and plumbed our sign. The next step is the opposite direction plumb. So it's a little out of rack, it's skewed. So we're gonna push it another direction, use our same supports or braces screwed to the post Fight it the way that we want it, stake in the ground, screw to the stake, and that'll hold it while we concrete around. All right, when you're mixing your concrete, just follow the instructions on the bag about how much water. You can add a little bit more to make it a little more workable, um, but too much, as you'll read further, can reduce the strength of the concrete. So be mindful of that. Backfill, you'll see when we get to it, try to get the concrete a little above the grade and then taper it away from the post. So in time, there's no standing water in and around the post. Placing the roof assembly on top of the pre-built and placed sign and post assembly. The way we did it was two. It got a little dicey, but we were able to do it safe with two ladders on either side of the sign. I would recommend using three people for this step. Once it's up there, the roof assembly is pretty steady, even if it's off center. So don't be too fearful of this part. Once you get it centered and where you want it, leveled either direction, you'll put four or five screws in from the outside to before into the post of the four by six. Once that's steady, you'll come back through and put one or two screws on either side, the cross members of the rafters, pre-drilled at a tight angle down through the top of the sign just for some extra support. The last two parts we're going to do is installation of the life jacket hanger portion along with the clothesline that's laced through that just keeps the life jackets from blowing constantly in the wind. What we'll do is we'll pre-drill two screws in either end and on either side, hold it up and screw it right in place against the bottom of the sign. This again was pre-built in the shop. We're installing it now. You could choose to build it on site if you want to. Reference the drawing for more details regarding the clothesline installation. But you start by drilling your holes centered on the posts. Then you'll thread the line through the holes and pull it nice and tight. Slide the stop that you bought from Lowe's over top of the clothesline and then crimp the stop to hold it tight. Leave yourself four to six inches of excess beyond the stop tied in a knot and thread it back so it's clean to have excess should you need it later. All right, procedurally, that's your final step. That's your completed sign. The last thing you may note is you won't wanna wreck your uh, forms or your supports at this point. You might come back the following day and then pull them apart. And then from there, you're good. Go to our website, fw.ky.gov for any more information. But if you've decided to commit and partner with us, thank you ahead of time and reach out to your contact if you need assistance with anything else from here.